I want to talk about some tips and tricks for installing the non-do-it-yourself version of these common mini splits. These units are made by Mydea. They are essentially all the same and they are rebranded in the US under various names like Pioneer, Senville, and Mr. Cool. The non-do-it-yourself models go for about half the price of the do-it-yourself models, but to install them you will need a few extra tools. You should get a plastic base instead of trying to pour one from concrete. This will cost a lot less than eight bags of concrete, and those bases last practically forever. I have one that's 20 years old and looks like new. Here are some views of the inside unit. There are two air filters, uh, both of which are removable and washable. Over on the right side is a secret switch that doesn't look like a switch at all. This switch is used for a test if the remote control does not work. Looking up inside the front cover, there's a spot to plug in the smart controller, which allows you to use your phone to control the unit. The next little box on the right is the back of the display unit. They tell you to drill a two and a half inch hole, sleeve it, and pass the line set through. First of all, I thought the sleeve for the line set was worthless. Second, the line set is covered with foam insulation, and it won't be easy to cram it, the drain tube, and the control cable through the two and a half inch hole while you're balanced on a ladder. So I recommend you drill a three and a half inch hole and sleeve it with PVC pipe. Three and a half inch PVC pipe has an outside diameter of three and a half inches, so it will fit perfectly in your three and a half inch hole. The inside diameter is three inches, and believe me, that makes a huge difference when you push the line set bundle through the hole. You need a hole saw set. I got this one from Harbor Freight for $16. I had to cut through some concrete board, so I used an abrasive jigsaw bit to do that. You're going to need a good flaring tool if you decide to shorten your line. This is really important. I used an eccentric model. Make sure you get the one that covers the tubing size you will flare. There are two parts to the tool. You have the screw-in flarer and the part that actually holds the tubing. This part has depressed cones cut into one side. The other side is flat. There are depressions on the side of the tool. I'm not going to go into how to use the tool right now. There are good videos O's on YouTube showing the process. But make sure you get the eccentric model. The cone on the eccentric model moves back and forth to smoothly make the flare. It makes a 45 degree flare. You will need to practice with the tool on scrap metal to make sure you know what you are doing when you go to flare the actual line. You want to get some spring benders. Don't try to use a tubing bender. They cost more and they are harder to use. You clip the right size over the tubing before carefully bending it. You're going to need a vacuum pump to vacuum out the evaporator. This is the model I got. There are two fittings on the side for different size connections. Sometimes a little cloud of oil can be ejected from the exhaust port. Wrap a tiny bit of steel wool on a piece of cloth and use that as a filter on the exhaust port. Get a 4 inches wide line set cover. These cost about $25 more than the 3 inch models. You will appreciate the expense and extra room when you go to cram the line set, drain tube, and control cable into the cover. There's just not enough room in the 3 inch. This is what the drain tube looks like. Deburring and flaring are the most critical parts of the installation. You want to carefully deburr the line after you have cut it to length. No matter how careful and light with your touch you are, you will likely leave a burr on the inside of the tubing after cutting it. There are deburring tools available, like this one, but sometimes they leave their own little burrs, and to do one job you don't really need one. When you are deburring, make sure you leave the end of the tubing pointed down at all times to make sure no copper scraps get into the line. Shake any scraps out. 
Use something sharp to test for burrs. I use a dental tool. Slide the sharp end out of the tubing, feeling for burrs. They will be easy to feel. I use a fine half round file to file the inside just enough to remove any burrs. Again, always keep the tubing pointing down. Use Nylog when you make the connections. Nylog is compatible with a 410A refrigerant. To use it, put a drop of Nylog on the flare face and on the flare contact on the fitting. You do not need to apply Nylog to the threads and doing so may cause you to over tighten the connection. Just put it on the flare faces and it will do its job. Also, put a drop of Nylog on the cone of the flaring tool when flaring to lubricate the flare and make it smoother. Here are some accessories that came with my unit. There are four rubber pads for mounting under the outside unit. These might be handy if you mounted it on a rack on the wall, but they weren't necessary to mount it on the ground. Here's a bag of goop for sealing. I didn't use it. I just used some old closed cell foam rubber in case I had to disassemble anything. This is some non-sticky tape used to wrap the line set. I didn't use it except right at the unit because my line was completely encased in foam insulation. These are covers that were sealing the line set. The line set is charged with nitrogen to keep it from corroding before you receive it. When you carefully remove these, if you don't hear nitrogen hissing out, you know the line set has leaked. Finally, here's a drain valve that is supposed to screw into the bottom of the outside unit. Trouble was, it was too big to fit between the plastic base and the machine. It might come in handy if you are mounting your unit on the side of the house and you want to direct the condensate away from the house. Finally, here is the remote control, which in addition to adjusting the temperature, does some pretty neat things. There is a timer button that allows you to set a time when the unit will come on, say an hour before you get home from work. There is an adjustment for setting the louver at the position you want, or to dehumidify only, or to swing the louvers back and forth. You can also set the unit to follow me mode. This last setting allows you to move the remote to the exact spot in the room you're in and the temperature will be automatically adjusted based on the location of the remote. I hope you learned something about these cheaper non-do-it-yourself mini splits. You can save a considerable amount of money by doing it yourself. Thanks for watching and you can find links to the tools I used in the comments below.